going to talk about the, the development of a conversational bot. Okay. Um, about me, I'm working in Red Hat as a solution architect in the, let's say, OpenStack industry. And before, I was an engineer in Red Hat as well. Uh, now, I would like to thank Red Hat for allowing me to discuss on something that is totally unrelated with my job, but is still open source. So, the bot story, it come uh, and it, it got, let's say, it grew up working in uh, IRC, usually, and at the same time, I was also on IRC discovering it. With the lights is on again. So it also came my interest in the bot when I start going around on IRC. So uh, there are two different categories of bot. One is the dumb bot that are used usually for enforcing rules and ACL on IRC, but also on other, let's say, other platforms. Uh, as well, uh, there was used to manage the services of a channel in uh, IRC and for accessing databases or reviewing information or showing up quotes, so on and so forth. Uh, at the same time, even on IRC, those was used for uh, stealing the IRC channel when there was no control. There was, they are used actually uh, to manage the zombies for the botnet that uh, we hear and sometimes we see also the effect that they have on uh, the news. And for doing uh, distributed denial of services and other bad things like stealing your data, so on and so forth. So they are dumb but they do their job most of the times. Um, at the same time, it come up with the same trend of vanity at the beginning, and now it's, it's becoming more like a business. The um, artificial intelligence bot that are the hardest and easiest to comprehend um, in um, in human, uh, human, in human mindset, because it's nice. Okay. It's nice to see uh, someone that is able to conversate at your same level, or that you feel it's somehow intelligent human being. And that's why uh, I guess one of the first attempts was Elisa in 1996. Uh, that was. Uh, let's say a, a bot that was able to uh, do well psy uh, psychiatry. So it was like to uh, help you elaborate your uh, your feelings, asking or reversing the same question. Use it on pattern. Let's say um, I'm not doing okay today, and he was answering why you're not doing great today. What's wrong? And when he was using keywords like family, he was saying, oh, do you have some anger management with your family? Or he could have said, how is your relationship with your family? And from that, he was somehow guiding you. You know, at the end, after you read all the whole conversation, he was able to speak for hours and not realizing that you didn't get anything. But it was the first attempt and it was a lot of research done, uh, done on that. Nowadays, uh, things are improving um, fastly thanks to um, the accessibility of uh, GPUs that are the CPU for the video cards, and those allow you to have a lot of more power to elaborate information. Plus, uh, we have frameworks like TensorFlow from, uh, from Google, uh, with AI from Facebook, that is a software as a service, and all those things actually are making the, let's say, the, the accessibility of these huge uh, neural networks consumable for us, for humans. And 
nowadays we see a totally different trend because um, oh, sorry uh, because um, the information uh, that we have it's massive and we need also to crunch it so thinking of a bot inside a, just one laptop for example or a virtual machine a very small one doesn't make too much sense but anyway um, my experience in uh, in the bot or bot industry actually come um, in uh, a very um, you know vanity vanity fashion because I was curious and I were I wanted to try to see what what was going on so uh, at the beginning I was using Perl as a language and is somehow allowed allowed me to get a lot of the tools that was around at the time, around 1997, 1998. Yeah, uh, I realized it later, but actually it was totally wrong. So Perl, even though it's cool for some things, it was unusable and unmaintainable after time. So that was my first bot. It was 512 lines, and it was crazy because I was stubborn enough to not find any useful uh, parser for the IRC messages. So I just took the RFC, that is the specifics of IRC, and I was parsing myself. So you could imagine which kind of balagan it was that. It was a mess. And that's just for uh, getting the messages after to do the actions was even crazier. So I will not show you right now all, uh, all the craziness in that code, even though if you want, you could get it uh, from the slides because you can click here and you're gonna get the URL. Or the other one that was just 182 lines because I grew up and I realized that there was different tools, but it was even crazier just to parse it. And that's when actually I really gave up with bots and I tried to do something else. Yeah, a Jenkins build bot. So I was able to see in, uh, in my time in Red Hat as a, as a software engineer when the build was good or not, just printed in our working channels. And that one was made in uh, Ruby, actually, like 12 or 15 lines of code, totally different. And after that, a Jira bot, because obviously we wanted to know uh, when we was assigned some bug or which kind of bug was available to take. And that one was made in uh, Python, actually. And it, it still, I guess it still work in, uh, at the time, it's like six years now, give it or take. And a Bugzilla bot, that is a nightmare for everyone. Bugzilla, at, at least inside Red Hat, because it's a mess to harvest information. And, well, the chatbot nowadays, that is a huge word and it's a hype, actually. It's because um, what we want to do is to um, automatize the information that are given and trying to move or shift the person that we have from responding simple questions to do things that really matter as people are trying to sell to us. So as we can see here, uh, the majority of interest in the communication, it come from Facebook, um, a company website so where you get the information, so where the chatbots are actually useful, and later on, on all the other tools like Slack, WhatsApp, Telegram, so on and so forth, depending also on the interest of the people. So. Um, the thing is, the benefits of the bots used for these kind of things are mostly for e-commerce, where people really have issues understanding how, for example, how the shipment is going, where the shipment, uh, when the shipment gonna arrive. Um, I could have this one and this one in the same package, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, if the website doesn't have a really decent, I would say, um, frequently asked question section, gonna be a mess. Because obviously it come 
to uh, your live chat and start asking, hey, I can do that. And you're going to see the, someone that is like a monkey. So it's just cut and pasting uh, the answer that he had given like 1,000 times before. And this is totally nonsense. So this is the, the first trend of the new, uh, new model of chatbot. And with the AI, it's fairly easy to do the, the language pickup, you know, the natural language pickup. Because um, it's easy to give orders, but it's difficult to make people understand. So if it's difficult to make people understand, imagine how it how could be difficult to make a computer understand what you really want. Like the first time with Siri, how many of those asked a question and Siri answered in a totally different way? Thousands of times, I guess. Or bad things. <laughs> so, um, and even with Google, with the um, Google Voice thing feature, I, yeah, OK, Google, OK, Google. Give me the street, blah, blah, blah. OK, you want to order this? No. Or you want to search blah, blah, car? No. Um, anyway, um, writing a chatbot. That is the most juicy uh, thing, at least for, uh, for people like me. It's, uh, it's something really easy, and at the same time could be um, really confusing due to the different platforms. So uh, at the time, to make it uh, easier and consumable for all of us, uh, I choose to use this open source library that is called Chatterbot. And they are using somehow machine learning tricks and machine learning um, uh, techniques to, to get information and try to give something meaningful from that. So, uh, how, to, how to start and work with chat, uh, Chatterbot? It's fairly easy. Just pip install Chatterbot. That's the first thing. The website, actually, it's, uh, it's very cool because you can get uh, the wiki documentation. And actually, it's organic. That in, our, um, in our world, in the open source world, it's one of the trickiest things ever. Because you can get a library, but you don't get any information. So it's complicated. So one of the most basic bots that you could have, it's just this one, where you um, just ask a single question here. Hello, how are you today? And it's just going to answer, fine, and shut up the application. So pretty useful, no. Interesting, hmm, probably. Um, one of the, one of the things that you have to take in account is that it's using the NL, uh, NLTK library. So it's doing the natural language processing. And you have few corpora. So you, you can get few informations from a corpus of uh, already discussed things or something that you have it personalized, like uh, specific questions with specific answers. And based on that, uh, you could have but later we are going to see it in the code. Um, you could have different trainings for different, um, for different actions. And at the same time, you could have um, different features and actually uh, different interfaces on how to, how to use the bot. For example, there is a plugin for uh, Gitter, there is a plugin for uh, HipChat, and they are working on thousands of others. So it, I chose this one because it's extendable and it's very well documented that it's important. And if something doesn't work, you will just send a patch and that's going to be it. So why not? So as I said before, the dependencies are just those, fairly easy, uh, fairly easy and easy to consume. And OK. So, for the bot, just to give you an understanding on, on what I did, it was um, I created a REST, uh, a REST API kind of thing. I, I'm ashamed to say that, that it's a REST API because it's just one endpoint. So it's mostly like a web server that answers you just in uh, plain text. And it's using uh, Mongo for the database, and it's using NLTK obviously on the 
underneath. So, voila. So, as you can see here, I created the object chatbot. And there are a few things, like the database that he's going to use. Um, here is the authentication. Uh, it's horrible, but I have a patch on that. And after, uh, I'm establishing the logic that you need to use. In this case, it's the best match. And to do this kind of comparison, it's using the Levenstein distance of what he already know. And the answer that he's going to give is the most frequent one, because you know it's still based in probabilities. So if one question was answered 100 times, so, and somehow was having the same Levenstein distance, so most probably this is the answer that uh, the answer that he wants. And at the same time, there is another logic that I implemented that is the um, love confidence. So if the confidence that the question that was asked is too low, like 0 0.55 between 0 and 1, so he's going to reply, I'm sorry, but I do not understand. So the people called try to elaborate a bit more. Um, at the same time, we have to be fully, fully honest here. It's just a start. It's not the end. It's not using TensorFlow. It's not using anything like that. Because it was too, it was totally different, a different topic. It's huge. It's a huge topic. Here's just to start, to grasp, to grasp the surface somehow. So, and as you can see here, the trainer or the function that is going to, uh, from where he's going to learn, it's called uh, Chatterbot uh, Corpus Trainer. At the same time, you can give a list. If you have, uh, let's say, 10 questions and just 10 questions, you can give a list with uh, the subsequent answers, and it's going to take from, that, uh, from there the, start, uh, the beginning of the conversation, let's say. And at the same time, it's, well, here I was just specifying the Mongo database that I was using. So here, as, corp as corpus, um, I'm giving him three, um, three things, or, well, three different corpus. And this is the English, the, the greetings, and the conversation. There are also the bad words, but for obvious reasons, we don't like it. And at the same time, what I would like to say is that this, uh, this corpora, or this um, corpus from this, for this bot, it's also in different languages. There was in, uh, well, I guess, in Hindi, Hebrew, Italian, but it's too, too small in, in Italian, so I didn't choose it. In Hebrew, I, I wanted to try, but I said, hmm, I'm not able to write in Hebrew, so let's avoid it. I tried, <laughs> didn't work. Uh, but yes, with cut and paste, it worked perfectly. So I was kind of confident for the demo, but no way. And well, and the other one, it was um, somehow um, a snapshot of, of some conversation. In, um, in, the in the chatbot world or in the artificial intelligence world, usually uh, when you want to have some organic discussion with a bot, you, you use a corpora uh, that is called um, Ubuntu uh, Forum Corpora. That is a dump of all the conversation from the Ubuntu uh, Forum about Linux, about everything. There is seriously everything there. And from that, it's just, um, it's, for, uh, it's fairly easy to have a better or a smarter bot. But for um, reasons of the de uh, deployment in, uh, in Aroku, I choose just to take the smallest one, even because it wasn't all available. So uh, here we can see uh, Howdy. We can see the ping. This is just for. Um, for myself to test if it was working properly. And here is the most uh, juicy one. That is, get, you ask the question, it get parsed, and it just returned the string from, uh, from the chatbot. So, how much time I could have spent writing all of this? Five minutes, 15 probably. And that's just a bot that doesn't learn. 
here we have um, the part where it's learning. So you get the feedback from, so, uh, from, from the user, let's say, or in, uh, in the Facebook chat, for example, you could get a like. When you do a messenger thingy, you put the plus one or whatever. And what he's doing here is somehow the same. He could have this kind of feature. So w once you get the confirmation that the answer was correct, he's just going to keep using it as much as possible when it's needed. And he obviously uh, store also the questions. So it's not just the initial question, but it's also all the questions related to it. So it's, it's kind of starts learning and growing. So this is just for the bot. And as you can see, the behavior is exactly the same because it's just expanded. But the get response is getting a process response. That is the primitive from uh, used in, uh, in get response. This is for the um, this is just for the rest bot. Now it's coming the the Google sorry the Facebook chat. That is even crazier because it's huge. Yeah, and here it doesn't cooperate. So here it's, um, it's oh, okay. So here I use another library that is open source. It's called FBMQ. It's a very comprehensive library for, um, for Facebook messages, uh, messages, but at the same time, it's not, um, it's not easy to use and consume. So you have to do you have to do a few things, like um, setting up a webhook. And since the, all the conversation between Facebook and your application, your messenger, uh, messenger application, it's done through uh, web sockets, everything needs to be somehow web socket comp uh, comprehensive, let's say. So um, here, I would like to, this is just for the authentication, so I will rather skip it and just go to the juicy part that is well i did few few trial and you know here you can get every kind of messages like i would like to know when the message was received and read it i would like to see when someone is giving his feedback so on and so forth now the our part here it's just so Yeah, so the interesting part here, it's uh, talk with bot. So I could have removed everything and just left this one. But since I wanted to, um, to test other features and see the responsiveness of, of this library, uh, I, kept, I kept everything there. So here, what he's doing is, if the text that is like a really dumb bot, if the text is in one of those words, do a specific actions like typing on, typing off, and so on and so forth. And here, uh, if he's not, what he's doing is just sending a messages, uh, send, take the message, send it to the bot, and answer. At the same time, here I'm doing something, something even more interesting, like getting the user profile that uh, connected with me. So, if, for example, my plan is to create a bot that is able to gather uh, more information based on the history of a specific user in order to be more uh, human with him based on his past converse, uh, conversations. So that's why I was working on that. So that's somehow what I did just for the bot part. Now um, we're going to take care of something else that is try and later we have some time for questions if it's one. So. Yeah, I got an idea. The, in that case, you know, this is very specific questions. So the machine learning uh, part is like nearly zero, but um, well, 
Yeah, I'm trying to use my phone to see if it's working. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just behind you. <laughs> and probably it's, it's jiggling right now. Yeah, it's jiggling. So here's the past conversations. And just a sec. Yeah. Here it is. So I'm going to try again. It's working. Thanks to Red Hat. Twice. Obviously, and something something else like he doesn't understand Hebrew, so he don't know what we are talking about. Even though I I thank him, so voila. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You know, I did a lot of testing, and I didn't clean the database. So this is somehow a snapshot of could be done, and. You know, it's just to get you confident. And that's it. I guess we are over.